and welcome back to Brian Hoden Studio. My name is Brian Hoden, and today in episode three, I will be continuing my discussion on how to create a minimal contemporary painted metal sculpture from concept to installation. The sculpture is entitled Converge, and it was created for a city in southern Indiana. Now that the fabrication is all complete, my next step is to sand the entire surface. I touched on this earlier, but now is the time to thoroughly sand the entire surface, including the corners, using a 40 grit, 6 inch sandpaper on my Porter Cable variable speed dual action sander. At this stage, you do not want to touch the bare metal without gloves on, and I usually wear thin latex gloves when handling the pieces. This is a self-etching primer that I will be spraying on the prepared bare metal. This primer will promote adhesion for the high build primer, which will be applied next. This is done wet on wet, meaning you spray on the etching primer, allow it to dry to the manufacturer's recommendations, then you apply the desired number of coats of high build primer, usually three to four. There are different names for the high build primer, but it basically is a primer that fills all of the imperfections in the surface that you apply it to. All of the primer, paint, clear coat, and supportive materials that I will use on this project were purchased at an automotive supply store, which are very high quality and very expensive. If you have no experience painting, I would recommend finding a store near you and developing a relationship with them and they should help guide you through all the paint related supplies that you will need for your project. The next step will be to apply a guide coat. A guide coat is just a light black powder substance that is made by 3M that I apply before sanding. This will allow any imperfections to show up black when you are sanding the primer flat. You can also use an inexpensive black spray paint as a guide coat. As with grinding the welds, there are several steps to sanding a primer. First, I will use a 6 inch pneumatic dual action sander with 180 grit sandpaper. The 180 grit paper will flatten the primer out really well and usually remove all the imperfections. You do need to be careful near the corners so you don't sand through the primer. I will lightly sand all my corners by hand using gentle pressure. I will then apply another guide coat and lightly sand with 220 and then repeat with 400 grit paper, both on the dual action sander, and then finishing the corners by hand. It is very crucial to remove all the imperfections and sanding marks, otherwise they will show up in your paint finish. You can see by my drawing that the sculpture will be painted four different shades of green. The paint system that I will be using is a two-stage system consisting of three to four coats of color and three coats of clear coat. It is really important that your paint area is very clean and more importantly, the pieces that you are painting. After the pieces are in place, I will clean them thoroughly with a wax and grease remover. Then before and in between each coat of color, I use a tight cloth to remove any dust that is on the paint surface. I only painted two pieces at a time so that I was not bumping into them and so I could truly focus on doing the best that I could on those two pieces. When painting, always wear protective clothing and a quality respirator and paint in a well-ventilated area. After completing this project, I finally completed my paint area with new lighting and a fresh coat of paint.
After applying the color coats, I will then clean and tack off two pieces at a time and then spray them with three coats of MAC Clear Coat. We are now all done with the clear coat and have all four pieces back in the spray area to get them out of my main studio. As my brother Bill likes to say, slow down to go faster. And that is exactly what we did and the results show. The paint turned out great and it truly looks like a finish that you would see on a high quality car. Today we will be assembling the sculpture and delivering it to the installation site. Before installing each of the screws, I will run a tap through the threads to clean out any paint and assure that the screw goes in without any issues. Then I will apply silicone around each of the screw holes so that water does not get inside the sculpture. Then there will be a large neoprene washer that will be placed under the mounting bracket to provide a seal and cushion between the two surfaces. We will then attach each section with stainless steel button head security screws with a small neoprene washer under a stainless steel washer. We now have two of the sections screwed together and you can see how the fasteners look as well as the contrast between the first two colors. The smaller section is the darker of the four colors and the bottom section is the most vibrant of the four colors. I wanted the mounting brackets to add a nice flow of color from one section to another and I believe they do just that. You can also see how nice the MAC clear coat looks. Unfortunately, I lost the footage showing the completion of the rest of the sculpture, but basically I followed the same steps as I did on the first two sections. After the assembly, we then protected the sculpture and delivered it to the site a few weeks later, and at that time the crew from the city set it in place, secured it to the concrete pedestal, and removed the protective coating. I then cleaned it and put a fresh coat of wax on it. One of the many rewards of creating a public artwork is the unlimited amount of people that can be inspired by it. My hope is that while people are walking the neighborhood sculpture trail, they will stop and discover all the artwork along their journey and be intrigued to create something of themselves. Hope you have enjoyed the long journey from conception to completion, showing what it takes to create a public work of art. Please subscribe so you get a notification when we release our next video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I will end with a small quote by Pablo Picasso. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. Thank you so much for watching Brian Hoden Studio. I hope you have enjoyed. Have a great day. And don't forget to make something of yourself. God bless.